If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting news here. China has officially taken the number one spot as the lead exporter of automobiles. They've come a long way uh, from the time that they had released their first car in 1956. So this is going to be a super interesting episode. Like I said, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below and click the notification bell icon so you don't miss out on any content that's coming. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Now let's get into the news according to the latest data from the General Administration of Customs. China's automobile exports in 2023 exceeded 5.2 million units, marking a jaw-dropping 57.4% increase year over year. And here's the kicker, electric vehicles accounted for a staggering one-third of these exports. So what's my take on this unexpected surge in China's automobile exports, especially with the surge in electric vehicles? It's a seismic shift. China's rapid development in the automobile industry, coupled with their cutting edge new energy vehicle technology, has truly propelled them to the top. The data speaks for itself and it's clear that traditional car companies are leading the change. Pretty fascinating, but let's talk about the most valuable players in this game, the traditional car companies. There's SAIC, Chang'an, Great Wall, and Geely, and Geely excuse me. They're all setting records with their overseas sales. SAIC's MG4 even claimed the compact pure electric vehicle sales crown in Europe. What's driving this success? It's a blend of overseas expansion and technological prowess. SAIC, for instance, is a leader in its brand globally. They're having outstanding overseas sales. Cherry, which is labeled as the science engineering man, saw a remarkable 101.1 year over year uh, increase in exports. The growth of these traditional giants is clearly shaping the automotive landscape. It's not just about shipping cars, it's about establishing presence overseas. Traditional car companies are investing, acquiring, and building factories. There's BYD's first overseas joint venture in Uzbekistan, Great Walls spread across Thailand, Malaysia, and Brazil, and much more. These companies are transforming from, transforming from mere exporters to global players. So how do I see this globalization impacting the perception of China's automotive industry? It's clearly a game changer. As Chinese companies solidify their overseas operations, they're not just exporting, they're contributing to the global understanding of China's automotive capabilities. Their impact extends far beyond just sales numbers. It's about influence and recognition on a global scale as well. Now let's shift gears here and talk about the underdogs. The new power car companies. While they might not boast the export numbers of the tr their traditional counterparts, companies like NIO, Liado, Xpong, they're all making waves in the international markets. So let's talk about my perspective on their overseas ventures. These new forces might not have the numbers yet, but their courage to enter the overseas markets early on is commendable. Xpong's moves in Norway, NIO's foray into Europe, and the plans for Germany showcase their determination. The challenge is for them to learn from the big players, improve their technology, and leverage their marketing prowess to remain competitive and be able to invest in rapid development. And speaking of showcasing, Chinese new car companies stole the spotlight at the 2023 Munich Auto Show. Nearly 50 Chinese car companies made up 7.4% of the total exhibitors. There's obviously an international stage presence here for Chinese uh, new car companies. And it's a strategic move. These companies understand the power of perception. By being major players at these auto shows, they're not just showcasing their products, they're showcasing China's, um, China's prowess in electrification technologies. It's a smart marketing move. Finally, as we acknowledge China's rise to the top, here's some advice that I have for traditional um, automakers and for new um, automakers. Unity is probably going to be key sticking together. Traditional car companies should learn from the Japanese model of collaboration. 
The Toyota Alliance has proven to be very successful, emphasizing shared knowledge and reduced costs and accelerated development. So for both traditional um, automakers and new automakers, it's important to realize that a price war is not a long-term strategy. Focus on winning consumers through other means, technical value, service excellence, and reliability. Thanks for joining us on another episode. I hope it was useful for you guys. If you found it insightful, entertaining, um, whatever, make sure you leave a comment down below. Click the notification bell icon, hit the like button. All that stuff really goes a long way in helping out the channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.